Uh, welcome back to Mechanics and Control of Robotic Manipulator. You know in the morning what we have seen like uh, kinematic and dynamic control schemes. Uh, so this particular lecture would be combining these two. So where we would be doing in the outer loop with the task space and the inner loop in the joint space. So that is what the cascaded here. It is not just like kinematic and dynamic. Even we are combining the cascaded with the help of what you call the backstepping design that we are trying to incorporate in that sense. So what we are trying to see, we are actually like give a idea, the kinematic loop we will control with, uh, you can say in a task space, that is what we wanted. And the inner loop, which is actually like the motor base and all, so that would supposed to be controlled in joint space that we will do it. So in that sense, what one can expect in this particular slide set would be giving a brief idea how this can be achieved. So although I'm trying to explain the backstepping design, but I will be trying to explain in a uh, robotic manipulator aspect where the control we will be doing in two stage. One actually like the outer loop, what you call kinematic control that would be done in task space or operational space. The other one, which is actually like you call inner loop where the dynamics involved so that we would be control in the what you call joint space. This is what the overall picture. So if that is the case, what one can actually like see it. So we can actually like come back what the disclaimer all about we give. So we'll be talking about the first we will be introducing what are the credentials supposed to be there for substituting or you can say implementing the cascader control design. The cascader control design I supposed to call as a backstepping hereafter, but this is what we are going to see in detail. So if that is the case, one criteria is that the in, you can say the system supposed to be written in a input affine form. What that means? So you can write the nth order system in n number of you can say first order system, but each subsystem supposed to have its own independent input. So that is what we are trying to say. In fact, some people call strictly feedback form. So in this case, actually I can call general. It is input affine form. Otherwise, what we usually write the general way, so we will write the x vector. So x dot vector, we will write as x and then t, okay? So that to like, this is a homogeneous system. If it is actually like a non-homogeneous system, in the sense you have an input, so that you will write like this, okay? So now this is the general way, but this general way, what we are bringing down, we are bringing down into n, you can say first order system, that to n first order system where the first system would be having second state variable as the input. And similarly, the second subsystem would be having a third state as the input, like the keep goes. The fi final nth system would be having the output, you can say input as u. So that's what you can actually like realize from this. So this is what we are actually like trying to address here. So if that is the case, what one can actually like expect from here. So you will actually like see that whether the robotic system is actually like in this form. Because the robotic system you can write as a second order, you can say differential equation, whether the second order differential equation can be written in this form. Yes, of course we can do it. You recall what is actually like a mu dot. Mu dot you can write as a j of q into q dot, where the second dynamic equation we can write q double dot in the form of m of q inverse, you can say within the bracket where tau minus n of q comma q dot, right? So in the sense, you can see that the tau is actually like independent input. So that is what you can say nth system would be having. And uh, you call q dot is actually like your first system input. So where the mu is the state, right? So like that we can actually write, that's what I have written. You can see that the two equation, which we know the kinematic and dynamic relationship. So that I'm actually like writing. Whereas the kinematic relation, I'm actually like mapping the two spaces. That is what I've written. Whereas the dynamic equation, again, we are mapping two space where one is cause of motion, the other one is motion, right? So that is what we have taken. Now by immediately, you can see that the choice. So the mu or you can say x1 would be mu and what you call the q dot would be x2, right? So that way we can actually like bring the choice. It is very uh, immediate and u would be actually like your tau, right? So this is what we are also like doing it. So this is what we wanted and we are actually like saying that the robotic equation we can rewrite in this form. So where f1 of x1 is actually like zero, okay? And x1 I'm considering mu and f1 of x2 also q dot and f1 of x1 is actually like zero and g1 of x1 I'm writing as j of q. In fact, strictly speaking, I have to write as actually like j of mu 
but you know like the mu and q are actually like interrelated with respect to forward and inverse kinematics so i assume that i can write g1 in the form of x1 so that i'm simply writing as j of q okay because the q is available as a feedback that is what one i'm actually like taking assumption here so further what i'm writing here the same way so f2 is actually like a supposed to be function of x1 and x2 so this is function of x1 right because i already said this can be rewritten in the inverse kinematic form and in that sense this is also like x1 replica and this is x2 replica okay so i'm not changing any variable but i'm actually like keeping that as consider as x1 equivalent and this is x2 okay not exact it is equivalent right so if that is the case the second one actually like you can get it so g2 also you can get it now you can see that this is done so now what you can do it so i am actually like saying that if i consider this is one subsystem so i assume that the error e1 so then what i can bring the error dynamics e1 plus some positive constant e1 equal to zero similarly this i assume as a second subsystem independent subsystem then i can assume that the error whatever associated so that i can write as a error dynamics in this form right so this is what i am also like doing it so for that before we will actually like rewrite the equation so here this is actually like task space control but what we are actually like doing it is a cascaded so we are actually like looking at these are available to us and this is the further that's what i said right the inverse kinematics and forward kinematics is available similarly the differential equations also available and then we are actually trying to find out the tau okay so as i already said if these two subsystems are independent so what we can actually like choose we can choose e1 dot plus k1 e1 equal to 0 and e2 dot this this is supposed to be k2 equal to e2 equal to 0 right we can actually like get it that way even k1 is not at all actually like we you can say it a difference because k1 as long positive it would be actually like fulfilling both but i am actually like putting k2 as a separate one so now you are actually like defining e1 and e2 in this form but strictly speaking this is not happening why the q dot is actually like what we are considering in this case it is independent the q dot is the input for the first subsystem but in reality it is not right so that is what we are also like trying to see so first i am taking the e1 as x1 decide minus x1 so i am trying to see what is the error dynamics so for that i am bringing it e1 dot as x1 dot decide minus x1 dot now x1 dot if i choose in such a way that this error dynamics is actually like in the form of e1 dot plus so k1 e1 equal to 0 right so if i want to do this then what i can do so x1 dot i can choose as what i can actually like choose so x1 decide dot plus so k1 e1 right so this is what the choice so this is what i am so like choosing so in the sense what i am trying to see so if this is a individual subsystem so the e1 tends to 0 when t tends to infinity if i wanted that way so i can choose so x2 which is what you call x1 dot in this way right so what that means so i am choosing this x2 so x2 i am choosing as you can say g of x1 inverse okay multiply with x1 decide dot plus k1 e1 right so i can do this right so this is what i am also like doing it because x1 dot is x2 i am choosing it so i have done this okay where f1 x1 is zero in this case but you can see that also you can consider so then you can actually like do it but what the difficulty here is x2 is not controllable in the sense you cannot actually like change the x2 is one of the state variable based on the dynamics it will get changed right it's a velocity so in that case what actually like i can bring so the x2 i can bring as x2 decide minus e2 right so that i can actually like bring it so if i bring this what i can actually like rewrite so i can rewrite this is actually like e2 that e2 i am writing as x2 dot uh, sorry x2 decide minus x2 then e2 dot i can write in this form but first we will finish the first part so what the first part so the x1 decide part uh, let me finish it so in the sense x2 we are choosing right so let us actually like substitute that x2 in the form of x2 decide minus e2 so then what you can actually like see that the x2 decide i will choose whatever i obtained earlier so now there would be a small residue that would be you can say g1 inverse of x1 into e2 that would be residue there so i assume that would be having 
so that i will try to show that how that can go away so right now i choose this x2 desired as a virtual control input i'm choosing in this form so now what happened i got this x2 desired also in this case so in this sense this is equivalent to q desired right so that is also i obtained so now this is definitely different from what we have done in a task based control right so here the q dot decide is actually like different than the what you have taken in the task based control so in the sense i am bringing back the equation x2 dot so in that x2 dot what is the input u so i am actually like rewriting this u in the form of actually like you can say k2 e2 plus x2 dot decide why because i am actually like interested this error dynamics right as zero so if i want this so this will come okay so that is what we are actually like substituting in addition to that in addition to that so what i am trying to see if i choose this way i may not able to take away the residue which was actually like hanging there what residue the g1 mm -hmm. inverse of x1 into e2 that was a residue that was hanging right in order to take away the, if this is a individual subsystem i can choose this way but this is not individual subsystem so that what i am trying to do i am bringing the lapnow method so you don't bother about the lapnow method very detail here you imagine that the lapnow direct method is giving two things so if you choose a lapnow candidate function where the candidate function is positive definite and whereas that you can say derivative of the lapnow candidate function is negative definite then your choice of the control law is actually like make the closed loop system is stable that to like asymptotically stable even you can add a global asymptotically stable so in order to fulfill that what i am trying to choose so i am trying to choose one of the what you call lapnow candidate function which is easiest choice so you know the if you want to have a candidate function as positive definite what i supposed to take so for example if i take x1 square so whatever value you put x1 that would be always positive right the similar way if i am taking in a vector so what i can to take so for example x1 transpose to x1 that is equivalent to x1 square right so that is what i am also trying to take so but when i take a derivative there would be hanging two term so i am trying to take away that so i am trying to choose as similar to a kinetic energy where the mass is 1 so in the sense what i am trying to do half e1 transpose e2 plus half e2 transpose e2 so this is what i am taking as a lapnow candidate function this lapnow candidate function you choose any e1 and e2 other than zero that would be positive and you choose e1 equal to zero and e2 equal to zero then it would be zero right so in the sense this is fulfilling the positive definiteness right so that is what we are taking now you take a derivative of this along with its trajectory what that means along with e1 and e2 trajectory then what you will get e1 transpose into e1 dot plus e2 transpose into e2 dot already you know what is e1 dot and e2 dot so you bring that okay so what that means so you try to bring so the e1 dot okay and uh, try to bring the case what you have substituted as x2 in the form of x2 decide minus e2 if you substitute that what the choice will come so there would be you can say some case where x2 decide the x2 decide i already chosen this way so now so even this way right so if i choose this way what i will get so i will actually like get all the benefit so that is what i am trying to get now e1 dot is you can see that minus k1 e1 plus g1 x1 e2 you imagine it's a single independent subsystem so this e2 will not be there so e1 dot equal to minus k1 e1 so even you re you rewrite so that would be e1 dot plus k1 e1 equal to 0 where the you can say system is stable now in that sense what one supposed to assume the e2 should go 0 then this would actually like ensure the e1 goes to 0 where t tends to infinity right so that is what we are interested then what we supposed to make sure the e2 error dynamics is actually like ensure that asymptotically stable asymptotically stable so for that i am bringing e2 dot so e2 dot you already know this is x2 decide dot minus x2 dot so now you can actually like rewrite what is x2 decide and x2 decide dot you already know so you substitute that and then you substitute what is x2 so x2 is actually like in the form of state equation so now what here the choice is actually like only u so now i choose u in such a way that 
e2 dot equal to minus k2 e2 and some term which is actually like cancelling the residue which you have come across in the previous slide okay so that i am trying to do so in that sense what i can choose the u i can choose for cancelling these all okay so that is what happening here in addition to that what you can see that you want to actually like take away the residue term which came there so that i am actually like putting it so now you can see that if i substitute this u into this equation in this equation what e2 dot will come it is very simple right so now you can actually like recall what is e1 dot so e1 dot is actually like minus k1 e1 plus g1 you can say x1 e2 and this is actually like minus k2 e2 minus g1 transpose x1 e1 right so now you can actually like see you have done almost everything so now you bring back that equation into the v dot equation so you substitute what you will get finally so you know already e transpose you can say uh, g can be written as g transpose e right so that is what we are actually like using it so that that residue term will go away now you can see that this is negative definite what that mean so this is actually like negative for all the value e1 and e2 except e1 and e2 are zero right if that is the case what d dot that would be zero so in the sense it is fulfilling the negative definite and the positive definite case so then what would be the control activity the control input is this so now you recall what is actually like g2 so g2 x1 x2 is so what that that is actually like m of q right so what is f2 x1 comma x2 so that is nothing but n of q comma q dot right so what is g1 of x1 that is nothing but j of q right and you can actually like substitute e1 is actually like nothing but so mu decide minus mu so e2 is actually like decide so q virtual input which i call so q decide dot minus q dot okay so and q dot decide you know where it comes so this all actually like you can bring it and you substitute it so finally you can see that this also like will fulfill if you actually like rearrange these all the term if you are assuming that the j or you can say j transpose or j are actually like identity then it is very similar to you call the computer task control but the computer task control not ensure what you call the error dynamics asymptotically stable but we have proved in the other way around where we taken a second order error dynamics but this particular equation what you call the inner and outer loop so that principle is actually like derived or verified the stability based on the lyapunov case so now what one can see so here we have taken two loop so one loop which is actually like trying to correct the error which is e1 that is actually like mu decide minus mu so that would be in outer loop where the second loop which is actually like try to correct e2 that would be q dot decide minus q dot where this q dot is actually like derived from e1 and mu decide right so that is what you can actually like get it so now this is what you call double loop control where the outer loop is controlling the task space position and the inner loop is controlling the you call joint space dynamics okay so that is what we call actually like uh, cascaded why it is called back stepping you can see right so you are actually like backward you are going it for example you have taken a subsystem x2 x3 and all so now this x2 is coming from where so from the backward where so third or you can say x2 is coming from the second subsystem that you would be substituting into first the other way around you can see that x2 decide is coming from the first subsystem so that's what it is actually like it is coming in the backward direction so that is what it is called back stepping design so even some people call it is integrated back stepping because you are doing something like called of numerical integration you are trying to do okay so even there is another phenomena so that we will discuss probably if time permits otherwise you can assume that this is a simple double loop where outer loop would be control the task space and the inner loop would be controlling the joint space so inner loop controlling the dynamics outer loop is controlling the kinematics okay so now you got a clarity on this i hope you understood what is cascaded you can say control design for a robotic manipulator 
so with that i am ending this particular short session and we will meet with uh, you can say few more lecture videos until then see you back take care